Chapter 14, assignment 2 is writing a dissociation equation. After you have identified a substance as soluble or insoluble, then you may or may not be able to write a dissociation equation. You can write dissociation equations when a substance is soluble. You cannot write them when a substance is insoluble. Dissociation means that the substance breaks apart into its individual ions. When you place a substance in water, like for example, you place NaCl in water, sodium chloride is soluble. So when you actually place it in the water, it will dissociate or break apart into its individual ions, the sodium plus one ion and the chloride minus one ion. So a dissociation equation simply represents this. So a couple of examples. If I wanted to write a dissociation equation for um, sodium sulfate, Na2SO4, first I'd have to identify is it soluble or insoluble. If you check your solubility rules, sodium sulfate is soluble. So originally it starts out as a solid. It starts out like if you're going to put salt in water, the salt is solid and the water is liquid and then you add it in and it dissolves. So it starts out as a solid. Then you're going to place your solid in some water. So we're going to write water over the arrow. You don't have to actually write water every time, but just for now, as a matter of fact, we are placing this salt in water. And when it is placed in water, because it's soluble, it will dissociate. The ions will break apart into the cation and the anion. So you would end up with Na plus 1. And we're going to mark it as aqueous because it has been dissolved in water. And aqueous means dissolved in water. And it breaks up to sulfate, which is SO4 minus 2. And that will also be labeled aqueous because it's dissolved in water. You do have to balance the equation. And the fact that we have two sodiums on the left means you need a coefficient of 2 for sodium on the right-hand side. And that's a dissociation equation. Yes, you absolutely have to put the charges. And you have to place aqueous after each ion to show what phase it's in. That being said, aqueous, solid, the solid and the aqueouses are known as phase notations. And phase notations should always be included whenever you are writing a dissociation equation. All right? What if you have a substance that is insoluble? What if you have a substance that is insoluble? Insoluble substances, you cannot write a dissociation equation. For example, iron 2 sulfate is going to be an insoluble substance. Iron 2 sulfate is insoluble. I lied. It's soluble. So we can write a dissociation equation for this one. So it gets placed in water. You don't have to write water every time. Remember, it breaks up into its individual ions. So this one's kind of tricky. How do you know if it's iron 2 or iron 3? Because sulfate has a minus 2 charge, because you memorized it, then the iron must be a plus 2 charge. So you get Fe plus 2. Be sure to write your aqueous plus SO4 minus 2. Be sure to write your aqueous. Okay, a substance that absolutely is not, is going to be insoluble. We're going to do um, iron 3 carbonate. Iron 3 carbonate. Solid. All right, iron 3 carbonate is insoluble, so you cannot write a dissociation equation. And since you can't write that, the only thing you could do is label it as a precipitate. Keeping in mind that dissociation means breaks apart due to dissolving. And if it's insoluble, it can't dissolve, so it can't break apart. And so it'll stay as a solid in the solution, and so we call that a precipitate.